Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Mikey Likes You podcast. I am Mikey, who likes. You are you who is liked. Boom. That's how the system works. It's a give and a take. I like you, and you receive like. I am going to do an episode that I'm squeezing in because, frankly, I got um, put, I had no lube wieners put in my butt. Uh, it's not quite that extreme, but I tried to do an episode with my wife last week. We went through it. We did a, I, what I think is an excellent episode, and somehow there was tremendous audio problems, technical problems with the audio, and it was it was completely unusable. I tried to fix it in post, and it was a real shame. I got frustrating, obviously, but I was like, eh, those are the breaks. Then I got contacted from Diamond Dallas Page's people, and they're like, hey, would you like to have Diamond Dallas Page on the show? I said, absolutely. God, what a godsend. I've been wanting to have DDP on the show for a long time. He's an amazing guy. I have so much to talk to him about. And uh, it helps my little situation here, you know, with the uh, not having a podcast. Well, they said, how about 11 a.m. Pacific tomorrow? Oh, my God, why? <clears throat> so they say, uh, 11 a.m., Pacific tomorrow, I say, awesome. That's 1 p.m. for me. Okay, they screwed up and put, they were thinking it should be 11 a.m. Eastern. So I get a call at like 9 a.m. my time. They're like, where are you? I said, what do you mean? And uh, we had to reschedule. So I was left here to my own devices. And I didn't want to do another Q&A just because. So I started thinking of stuff that I, I feel like is important to talk about. And I, I even jotted down some notes uh, of things that I think are important to um, at least broach with you, my friends. The first one is, you know, it is January 13th as I record this. So everyone's probably still in the full swing of their New Year's resolution fitness quest, right? It's a, it's still that time of year and everyone's like, hey, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm doing it. I'm This year is going to be the year, 2022. I'm going to get in shape. It's going to be fantastic. So now I start getting all the same questions over and over again. How many reps should I be doing? Uh, how many sets should I be doing? Then... Also, a lot of, I like to do, uh, I run five miles on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, and I also do heavy lifting on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and I'm thinking that if I do some sprints too after my workouts, I'll get everything all taken care of, or I uh, I do Zumba five days a week, so I'm only going to lift two days a week. My overall point is one of the biggest problems people encounter stem from program hopping and program mixing. We've talked about this ad nauseum in other podcasts about how the body, the human body, responds in very specific ways to very specific stimulus. You can't just shoot it with a shotgun and think that all of the buckshot is going to hit. You have to treat it like a sniper rifle. That's honestly the way things go. And that is my biggest problem with CrossFit. I, I I don't have a problem with like the culture. A lot of fitness dudes and chicks, they get on CrossFit for like the cultural aspect. I don't care. I think communal connectivity is actually really beneficial. My problem with CrossFit is that it's right there in the slug line. It's like we specialize in nothing. That doesn't, well, you're going to end up being mediocre at everything. And I encourage people to engage in different types of activities, especially if some of it's recreational. Also, if it's a, a combat, because that really does tap into something primal. Um, and there's something really beneficial overall. On top of learning how to defend yourself, there's just a genuine kind of human asset to engaging in combat. So I, I encourage people to diversify their, their movement, but don't think by doing everything, you're going to get better at everything. That actually is 
so far from the truth. It's it's completely antithetical to how the human body responds. If you're if you want to lose body fat, if you want to look amazing, you have to really focus on that. And you're not going to improve your one rep maxes in the long run. You're not going to improve your um, your marathon time. You're not going to improve. I can can go down the list. I hope you understand. If you want to focus in on extreme levels of absolute strength, if you want to be competitive at powerlifting, you're not going to reach sub 10% body fat. This is the real kind of basis around programming and why you should look to someone who really knows what they're talking about when you seek out programming. If someone promises you the world in your palm, they're fucking with you and they're trying to take your money. If you want to be as big as The Rock, as lean as Brad Pitt in Fight Club, and finish a marathon in three hours, uh, you're not going to. So you're going to end up being none of those things. Because all of the aforementioned things take a tremendous amount of focused attention. Um, So don't try to mix programs thinking that you're going to get the best of everything. Because you're going to get the worst of all of it. You're, don't think you're going to mix all these different programs because you're going to get the best of all of them. You're going to get nothing from any of them. It's kind of a recovery. Um, and, you know, don't get three weeks into a program that is good and then just get tired of it, thinking that you can do more. If, if I do more, things will happen more rapidly. Let me tell you a little story. It's not necessarily a fable because this is reality. This happened on earth. This is history. Um, There was a race to the South Pole, 1912. There's this dude who represented the British Empire who was absolutely, you know, top of the heap, powerful, world dominant forces at that point, you know. Uh, Robert Falcon Scott is this dude's name, right? He's, He's representing. The Queen, and uh, he is going to, for the sake of not only um, British uh, empowerment, but also for the sake of science, he's going to make it to the South Pole. Now, it's probably not that profound to say that in 2022, but this is 1912. Um, This was an incredibly dangerous and incredibly daring thing to do. So this Norwegian guy, right, who's probably a lot better at dealing with Arctic stuff because he's Norwegian, His name's Amundsen. He says, oh, fuck that. I'm going to the South Pole, too. Now, they took incredibly different approaches in how they were going to make their way to the South Pole. And again, this was a near fatalistic uh, adventure because of the horrible and and incredibly intrepid um, terrain and weather and what you know, the technology they had available to them, okay? So how they went about approaching it was going to be paramount to their level of success or lack thereof. So Amundsen takes five sled dogs, five dudes, four other people besides him, five total, five sled dogs. And he says, we are going to go a prescribed distance Every single day, I don't care if we have the energy. I don't care if we have the food or the resources or the dogs happen to have a little bit more juice left in them. They had a prescribed amount of kilometers that they were going to traverse every single day. And then they were going to set up camp and they were going to rest and they were going to prepare to do the same thing. Well, Scott, on the other hand, had incredibly elaborate um, these, these very exotic Manchurian uh, horses, these giant horses, and, and on top of the sled dogs, of course, that they needed. He also ha- brought in the top of the line at the time, ice breaking and snow uh, driving machines. And it was an incredible undertaking in, in drastic comparison, dramatic comparison to um, to Amundsen. Okay. Three days in, the British explorers and Scott, they encounter tremendous problems, technical, mechanical problems with the machines. The horses end up being too heavy 
to traverse the terrain. And then they have to make up for that. They just try to go balls to the wall, going hundreds of kilometers at a time until they can't move anymore. The dudes are getting frostbite and then they have to crash out to the point like some of the time their limbs were in danger of being amputated because they just they they pushed it too hard and they were trying to do too much at once. Sure enough, Amundsen gets to the South Pole a month, a month before the Brits. The Brits had much more elaborate and much more complex machinery and technology and money available to them. But this dude said, I'm going to take the slow route because I'll get there faster. And this applies to fitness so much. Because if you just stay the course and understand you know, let's say you want to lose weight. Most of us do, right? Uh, body fat, body recomposition is usually the goal for most people. You just got to get that caloric deficit. Stay there. Lift, lift heavy, you know, or resistance training, how you find it. Really, really tough, infrequent resistance training. Three days a week is pretty much perfect for most people. And you got to do it for a long time. Two weeks in, you can't be complaining that you still have love handles. That takes years. I still have back, lower back and, you know, kind of oblique fat. I'm like 9% body fat. I got a DEXA scan recently. I'm not trying to toot my own horn. What I'm saying is, is that, that that's an eternity that you have down the road and you're getting upset and then wanting to do more and add in other elaborate things that are just going to actually take away from your ability to get to that final destination. Take the slow route. You will get there faster. Remember my man Amundsen. Remember what he said when he got to the South Pole and he planted that Norwegian flag. He said, Ugin, Fjuden, Dugin, Dugin, Dugin. All right. Next thing I want to talk about is the liver king. Guy blows up the internet. Um, and I think justifiably so. He runs a company called Ancestral Supplements. And his name is Brian Johnson. No, he was not the former front man for ACDC. Right? I think, was it Brian Johnson that they ended up having to kick out of the band because he's deaf? Or... Yes, it was. It was Brian Johnson, yeah? Right? Because they replaced him with Axl Rose. Anyway. Bon Scott dead, Brian Johnson. He's a different Brian Johnson. Fuck. Dude lives here in Texas. He is so jacked and so ripped. Okay, like legit. Other ripped people go look at him and like, fuck, look at those abs. That separation's insane. And he's really strong. And he's really, really healthy. And he's really vibrant. And he can do a lot of things that are incredibly impressive physically. Um... He eats a very odd diet of mostly raw organ meats and raw eggs and stuff like that. And uh, although I don't necessarily think people need to emulate that, um, I do think he's opening people's eyes to a lot of very positive things. Like he walks every day. I've talked about it a million times. Most people overlook it because it kind of falls into that slow route thing. And they, people think it's not hardcore enough. He just moves slowly. All day, every day, little bursts of it. He also lifts super heavy, but that again is only a couple times a week. He is constantly telling people to get some good sleep. It is that important. And I do think that liver um, and animal, animal flesh in general is genuinely the most nutritious thing on the planet. Um, and that is so misunderstood um, because of you know, 80s ideas of saturated fat and cholesterol and, you know, you got to eat a lot of vegetables to be healthy. The reality is, is if we're just being objective and looking at it from a nutrient standpoint, um, animal protein and meat, red meat in particular, is the most nutrient dense thing you can find. And, you know, organ meats are even a little bit above that. Now, most people don't want to eat organ meats. <laughs> Fucking Gloria, either in or out, you see... I live on a farm in Texas Hill Country now. 
there's so many critters that we can't have like regular dog doors. And my wife and I are looking into, you know, farm dogs, which just stay outside the whole time. And they're perfectly fine doing that. They prefer it. But Gloria is just a regular old dog. She's a big dog, but she's a regular old dog. So she's constantly like, I want to go out. And then she fucking scratches at the door. And I'm fine with that. Okay. But her new thing is let me out. And then 35 seconds later, let me back in. And then a minute and a half later, let me back out. And it's like, listen, fuck her. Especially when I'm doing a plan chance. Hmm? You pay the price. Sorry. I'll sell her to a exotic restaurant that eats dog. What was I saying? Oh, Liver King. Now, a man of his age, he is uh, in his 50s, I believe, or at least at, at very, he's older than me. He's in his late 40s at, at the very least, with that conditioning. One can assume that there is other things being put in his body besides liver and raw eggs to get that way. But I'm tired of worrying about that. Frankly, I don't care. Neither should you. Because the whole natty or not shit, there's value to it because I don't think like young kids should think that The Rock and, you know, who else, whoever this, you know, giant muscular people out there are just eating their vegetables and saying their prayers and boom, they're jacked. And you could do that too. No, fucking stop that. Steroids are way, not steroids necessarily, but anabolic substances and performance enhancing drugs and ergogenic aids and growth hormone and peptides. It is way more pervasive than you think. And it's not just professional bodybuilders, okay? It's all over Hollywood. That being said, someone like The Rock or The Liver King, you could put all the fucking juice in someone's ass and pump them full of growth hormone, and you're not going to get anywhere close to that guy's level of conditioning unless you train like a fucking animal. Okay? So I do think, look, I understand why it's important for people who are using performance enhancing substances to achieve these great bodies to be open about it to to especially young men who are looking at them with this idealistic view but at the same time i'm really tired of all you fucking shitheads online who are like well doesn't matter he's natty it, 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 cheater cheater it's like mm, fuck, depending on how you look at it i i guess it's not like you put any there's no substance you put in your body and it makes you jacked talk to anybody who used steroids and didn't train and ask them how that went when they have titties and a belly and a big puffy face. That's what not training and using performance enhancing drugs will get you. I'll be honest. If you were to get really good, like human grade growth hormone, you know, somatrope or something, if you use that and didn't do anything else, it would probably make you leaner and, and eat a little leaner. A little, maybe a little stronger. But my point being that you could say natty or not. It, fine. The liver king, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what he's putting in his body. That guy trains like an animal. And he's so disciplined and so in control of everything that he's putting in his body and the way that he moves his body. So uh, every, uh, I've gotten like five. I don't know if he got a, a boost uh, from some algorithm on Instagram or something, but I've gotten like five questions about what I think about the liver king just in the last three or four days. So that's what I think about him. I think he is a, a very, very positive um, influence on you if you're looking to be healthier because he does, even though he may take on the image of like a, a bodybuilder, a physique performer who has thrown the idea of health aside for the sake of their physique, he is not one of those guys. He is incredibly healthy and he lives a holistic lifestyle. And I think that that's really awesome because I love being jacked. I love big jacked fucking muscle men, but I also love the idea of treating your body well. And I do think that you can have both. You don't have to go, you don't have to forsake the other in hopes of uh, obtaining one of them. Um, so that's my take on that. What's my next thing? Oh yeah. Uh, protein, uh, fucking protein shakes and supplements in general. Because it is early January, everyone's like gung-ho about making the change, right? With their f fitness and with their body. 
Uh, I, I literally got this question today, and it was like the third or fourth question on supplements. How many protein shakes do I need to have every day? And my response, very honestly, was zero. Need to, you don't need protein shakes. In fact, if you can get real food, it'd be beneficial to take it. Protein shakes are simply a form of convenience. They are a, 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 a product of marketing and a product of convenience. That's it. It is not in any way crucial or even necessary for you to take protein shakes in order to get in great shape. To get, In fact, when dudes or gals get super lean and they want to push it to the edge, you know, like a, a bikini competitor or a men's physique competitor and they're weeks out from a show, they, they pull out any type of like a supplemental protein and it's like, straight like a a very very strict kind of because there's it's not necessarily the best choice now if you have a real life you have a family you have a career uh, uh, a difficult career um you have outside stresses i understand that you're not always going to be able to take a tupperware full of chicken breast or, or ground sirloin wherever you go um and there can be Great advantages to just being able to slug something that's low in calorie, high in protein, and uh, not not in any way bad for you. But it's not something that's necessary. It's not crucial. There's only there's only two things that are crucial. <clears throat> there are three things that are crucial when it comes to achieving like your dream body: training, diet, and overall recovery lifestyle stuff. You got to train hard. You got to have a clear cut idea of what you want to achieve and eat to fit that goal. And you got to sleep and you got to reduce your stress as best you can. And you have to, uh, you know, hydrate and do all these lifestyle things that uh, will help get you there, right? That's all. That's all you got to do. What is in that diet? What you do to get to sleep? How you're training? is uh it varies greatly and anyone who tells you differently is a fucking asshole okay that's all you need you don't need any supplements there's supplements that that help and work i take some uh you know i don't i, I wouldn't say i take any <laughs> supplements magnolia what's going on i think she's out with the chickens just took a bath and she just like sprinted down the stairs and into the kitchen where I'm recording with no pants on and I'm like, what? that's why I was like what, the, what are you doing anyway so uh can you please stop running in because of Coco okay because <laughs> she does that every time I understand so why maybe if you're gonna go out to the chicken coop put on more clothes Okay, you want more soup? Okay. Okay, well, can you handle that idea in a silent fashion? Yes. Thank you. Um, I There are supplements that are of value. I've always, I've constantly told you that creatine monohydrate is not just for meatheads. It's an incredibly beneficial supplement. It's cheap, and um, it has a, a myriad of benefits. You know, fish oils, omega-3s, sure, there's there's things there. Um, I take supplements. I, I take uh, vitamin D every day and I take ZMA to go to bed you know zinc magnesium mixture so I'm not I'm not sitting here saying like don't ever buy any supplements there may be some benefit but the benefit is so negligible that I can't sit here and say that anything's crucial nothing is to achieve any goal so don't let marketing trickery or elaborate, really enticing, sexy ads make you think that you have to do that. Because in reality, the the alternative is actually true. The more that you can get your nutrient, both micro and macronutrients from real kind of just in the earth food, uh, the better off you'll be. I promise you that. Uh... I want to finish up with 
two things. That A, really represent who I am as a person, but also can give you a little insight into how fucking stupid I am. So I'm watching The Breakfast Club, right? And I think that's John Hughes' best film. He's got a lot of great films. I think as far as like quality of cinema, Breakfast Club's his best one, right? So I'm watching it, right? And there's a scene where the vice principal, who's like the main antagonist, he comes in, he tells Judd Nelson, he's like, you step out of line one more time, I'll drag your dick in the dirt. For the last three days, I've been thinking about, well, how, okay, you're going to drag his dick in the dirt. Are you going to remove his dick? And then put it in dirt? Because that, that's gnarly. If you're going to cut a high school student's dick off and make him watch you put it in dirt, you're that's like Stalin level. I mean, that's like Idi Amin, man. Like, wow. Or are you going to drag his dick in the dirt while it's still connected to his body? That means you have to get him naked and then grapple with him down to the dirt and then press on his ass like push his fucking ass down and be like yeah now it's in the dirt i've i've been thinking about that 90 percent of my waking hours for the last three days since i watched that movie another thing is i was watching aliens as i was trying to fall asleep um i i didn't mean to i just stumbled across aliens and that's such a good movie okay the second alien film um 86 james cameron beautiful beautiful film my dog can you believe that ah. and i hurt my back son of a bitch um so i'm watching it. aliens and it ends right i, I caught it up i caught it in like three-fourths of the way through and i'm watching the credits and the cinematographer's name is Dick Bush. I'm a 42-year-old man with a family. And I'm, I was overwhelmed with jealousy that his name was Dick Bush. I was like, fuck, I wish my name was Dick Bush. Like Dick and Bush right there. Ugh. I hope there's others of you out there. Let's be honest, mostly men. There's no, like, there's just no female has such an unsophisticated brain that she's like, oh, yeah, I'd like to be named Dick Bush. But I hope there's someone out there who's like, I get you, dude. I get you. Because I'm questioning, you know, I'm definitely like my self-esteem is low because of, those two ideas. I'm like, I really, I spend a lot of time ruminating on the dude in Breakfast Club putting the other dude's dick in dirt and also that there's a guy named Dick Bush. In this crazy mixed up world that makes you think that nobody cares, remember, I do. Love you guys.